Well, hey, my name is Ryan, and you're watching Creative Sound Lab, where audio recording is an art form. And this is part three of the Mastering the Art of Recording Drums Without Sampling. It's a multi-video series that's really cool. Uh, part one is already blowing up about overheads. If you haven't watched that already, go ahead and check it out first. It's really the foundation of the entire series. Part two was about phasing and polarity and really the mathematics of putting all these microphones and making sure they add up in their final mix. Today is really the point where you either ditch the idea of recording your own drum set and use samples, or you really push through, you really try to get the sounds that you want. Today is really about dialing in your close mics. This is really the point at which you start to sculpt the sounds that you're recording. Now, for today and dialing your close mics and really dialing in your sounds, there's going to be three elements that we're going to be talking about today. The three elements of today's episode is distance, angle, and null. And if you have to really define these further, you can say that number one, distance, is really about the low end EQ, the proximity effect. Number two, the angle is more about the mid frequency EQ the physics of the drum head and the harmonics. And then part three, the null, is really about the high frequency EQ, um, preserving that high end and what the microphone should avoid recording. So these are all basically low, mid, and high frequencies of the drums and the tones that we're gonna be sculpting on our drum kit. So let's get started. So proximity effect is an amazing tool. I use it on nearly everything that I record. And it's a great way to uh, increase or decrease the amount of low end in a sound that you're recording. This is uh, th this proximity effect is something that happens in uh, every directional microphone, and it'll vary based on the design, the physical design of the microphone. And so let's talk about why proximity effect even happens, and how we can best use it. Showing you with audio examples on how you can best use it to dial in drum sounds. The most basic form of a microphone, and in fact the way that it picks up sound, is omnidirectional. And so this is actually a sphere. A lot of times it's uh, represented as a circle, but it actually is three-dimensional. So from the bottom, from the top, from the sides, from the front, it is collecting sound evenly. Now the microphone with the most proximity effect is a figure eight microphone. And this collects sound from the front, and the back of the microphone. The sound here is actually a combination. Um, the, the, the voltage is actually generated when pressure hits the front of a microphone and the pressure difference between the back and the front. Okay, So it's almost like um, a surge of waves, like a sound waves, and it's hitting the front, but then it's also around the back. It's like this dip. Okay, this dip. And so sound is actually hitting the front and it takes time to actually go around. Let's say this is a, a ribbon microphone. It actually has to take time to go around the side of that microphone body. Okay, the actual housing, the thing, the thing that's holding it together. Of course, we have, you know, magnets over here. So there's, there are things that has to go around to reach the back and then hit the back of that ribbon. This is called the pressure gradient. It's a combination of the pressure of the front and the pressure of the back, that difference. So this distance right here is actually key. As we get closer and closer to the microphone, this distance stays the same, but our musical instrument, our drum is getting closer and closer. All of a sudden, if you think of these as kind of a ratio, this is actually exponentially changing. Okay, so let's say this is one inch and our drum is only four inches away. If we half the distance, now we're at a, a two to one ratio of whatever this distance is, an inch, and two inches to our drum. We get closer, all of a sudden, boom, we're one to one. So exponentially, we're rising, we're affecting the pressure gradient of the back and front of the microphone. This is why we get proximity effect. Notice how as we're moving the microphone closer to the drum, we're adding proximity effect. Each microphone is going to be a little different in the amount of proximity effect that it has. If you need less low end, move the mic away from the drum. 
If you need more low end, move it closer. Okay, so the second element is really to control the aiming of the microphone, to dial in the harmonics, the mid-range of the drum sound. The way that I like to think of it is that the center of the drum is producing the fundamental. Um, if this were a guitar string, uh, that would be E, right? But the second or third harmonic could be, you know, fourth, the fifth, the octave, you know. There's all these other frequencies that stack in on top of that E that are a part of the sound of a guitar. That's how our ear identifies exactly what instrument is being played. So in this case, we're actually able to dial in and shape and help capture the unique sound of the drum based on where we're pointing the mic. The way that I like to think of this is that the fundamental happens right in the middle. This is where the, the actual membrane can be moving the greatest amount, therefore creating the slowest waves, okay? Uh, then as we move to the edge, we're producing, you know, the second, you know, and the third, and, and all, these other, uh, all these other elements of the drum sound that make it sound like a drum. Uh, these are the elements that cue the listener in to say, oh, that sounds like a coated drum head, or a clear drum head, or a calfskin drum head. Uh, these are the sonic identity of what the drum is, whether it's vintage, whether it's birch or maple. This is all that important um, fingerprint information of the drum. And so as we dial in our drum sounds, we can say, do we want a really rich uh, spectrum of harmonic content? Yeah, we can point it more towards the edge of the drum. Or if we want a more like rock, thunderous, more pure drum sound that doesn't have too much extra junk going on, we can aim the mic a little bit more into the center of the drum. And that way we can get a more pure sound out of the drum. Notice how we get a little bit more harmonic content when pointing the microphone towards the edge and a little less harmonic, more of a pure tone when pointing the microphone towards the center of the drum. So a third element of dialing in uh, your close mics is really to preserve the high end. So we've talked about proximity effect for the low harmonic content of angling the mics. And really in our close mics, uh, it does collect the high end, but there are so many symbols around a typical drum set. We have to really protect the high end attack sound that our microphones are able to collect. And this is really the name of the game is pointing the knoll of the microphone at the cymbals. This way, if we need to boost anything out of our snare drum, or we need to hear clearly the attack of our floor tom, we can do that without having just a ton of wash of cymbals into those mics. Usually for the snare drum, I have to point the back of the SM57 at the hi-hat. This may mean I have to use a right angle uh, to get it in there, to sneak it in there, but I basically point the knoll back at the hi-hat. Also, for the floor tom, I have to point the knoll of the microphone back at the ride cymbal. This means that um, I have to point the knoll, but I also have to keep in mind of where on the drum I want to be pointing the front of the microphone. So it's kind of a balancing act, but pointing the knoll of the microphone helps to preserve the high end, that high end attack. And without using the knoll of microphones, we're not able to really preserve that, and we won't have any high end because we won't be able to turn up these close mics the second the drummer hits the cymbals. Let's check out how this sounds in practice. Here we can hear how the polar pad on the microphone is rejecting what is behind the cardioid microphone, and we can use this to avoid loud cymbal bleed that will cause us trouble in the final mix. Okay, so those are the three concepts that have really helped me over the many years of recording drums. Now, I haven't always had a nice three-part list. I've actually just always used these concepts, and for this series, I figured out finally what it is that I've been doing this whole time. But once again, uh, these three elements are using the distance 
to control the proximity effect, that's the low end, using the angle to control the mid frequency content, that's the mid, and then using the null to preserve the high end that's there, that's the high end element of your drum sounds. And also, if you'd like the free PDF download for this episode, along with access to every other, other episode that I've done, uh, just click the links on the screen or in the description to get access to those. I'll see you next week.